What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Engineers Out Filters podcast. This is episode 151, and we made it. Took a little month off, a little bit of a rest. I know some people on this call were not happy about that. I'm looking at you, Emily, and I'm sorry, all right? But we're back for a little bullshit bracket action, as we love to do every March. It's the third annual bullshit bracket. Uh, we got some we got some new faces. We got some old and battered uh, contenders here, and uh, we're going to find out. Who's the best bullshitter here in 2022? And uh, our first round today is going to be Superhero Showdown. Trying to figure out who is the best superhero. Oh. Now, let me introduce our players today. In the first match, last year, he was the unlikely hero that no one was expecting, securing oh. victory despite all the haters. This year, will he use his newfound power for good or for evil? Ooh. With Venom, your champion, Joseph, the Grand Champ. Hey, I'm Joseph, and uh, I'm drinking Mini Unicorn, um, an IPA that I got for free for tuning a guy's snowboard. Was- and he said, and I quote, you won't look cool drinking it, but it sounds good. And <laughs> I wouldn't be the true champion if I wasn't drinking it out of my champion pint glass oh, today. Oh, shit. <laughs> Just to just to flex, you know. He is flexing on us today. So, but yeah. now let's figure out who's his opponent. His opponent is a new contender this year, and she is here to show us all the different powers she is capable of. Will she be kind and unassuming, or will she show us the beast within? With Jack Jack from The Incredibles, Molly Boswell. Hello, I am currently drinking a Bush Light, and this is classic. <laughs> Eat beer <laughs> never gets old, um, and I'm ready to win. Hell yeah! In today's second match, she's a fan favorite that didn't fly as high as we all expected last year. <laughs> Can she build herself a new strategy and blast her foe with Iron Man, Emily Widenzi? All right, hey everybody, uh, back again, year three with a uh, truly watermelon kiwi, and to also flex. From the EWF <laughs> podcast, Koozie here. Hell yeah, I'm loving all the merch that uh, are popping up on the stream today. Her opponent is a contender that is constantly underestimated, but is always lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. Will he confirm the kill or sacrifice himself for the greater good? With Black Widow, it's Gabe Doman. What's going on, guys? It's Gabe. Uh, mm. I don't think I've gotten <clears throat> over fourth. In any of these, years, so, uh, <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> underestimate is pretty accurate. Uh, I'm drinking the Fair State Brewing Party Forward and my Indeed Flavor Wave IPA uh, koozie. But on my desk, I have my uh, bottle opener and Dayton's bottle opener yeah. from last year. <laughs> so Fuck I still got the merch. Yeah. Just excited to be. In match number three. Uh, is a contestant that has always reached for the finals, but has always fallen short, perhaps blinded by his own hubris. Can he heighten his senses and overcome his obstacles? With Daredevil, it's Jacob Thompson. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, today, <laughs> I am drinking water because I'm coming off of a cold, so hopefully next week I'll be able to drink some of it for you. But uh, we're, we're trying, to, trying to feel good today and get, get a nice win. His opponent is a man that has experienced both the light of victory and the darkness of defeat. <laughs> Can his willpower help him regain his former glory? With Green Lantern, it's Dayton Pex. Waza! <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I know I like the monologue about my drinks that I'm drinking. This one's a new one, all right? Bud Light, hard soda, okay? Ooh, I had oh, high God. hopes. I had high hopes for this. I was like, "Oh man, yeah. a new, a new type of drink." I'm super fucking excited for this. And then I, I opened it up, drank the first one, and I'm like, "What the fuck was I thinking? I should have just bought diet coke and cheap ass vodka." So <laughs> oh, no. here I am, wallowing in my errors, but they taste all right. There we go. In our final match of the day, our second new contender seeks to show us his gifts and amass a following. 
can he perform a miracle or will he get crucified <laughs> with <laughs> Jesus Christ? It's Josh Cole. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm not drinking anything because that shit's a sin and I would never abuse alcohol or drink. <laughs> now, I'd like to start this with a land acknowledgement. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and finally, last year, everyone said they loved him. But when it came down to it, they abandoned him when he needed them most. This year, will he prove to everyone that he is strong and he can do it on his own? Representing single mothers, <laughs> Alex Perkins. <laughs> yes, hello. Uh, happy to be back. I was robbed last year. Uh, that mistake won't happen this year, though. Taking the dub. Oh, I'm drinking truly strawberry lemonade. Nice. Those are our Not matches for the day, and let me just briefly break down how this is all going to work for any listeners out there who are not familiar with the Bullshit Bracket format. We have four matches, and each one, the each contestant will give their opening arguments, followed by a rebuttal period where they can talk shit to each other, and then a question period from the rest of us, where we can grill them on their, their arguments. After that, the remaining six people on this call will give a score of 1 to 10 for each contestant, and the person with the highest average score will win and move on to the next round. The loser will go down to the consolation bracket. Pretty simple. And uh, let's just get into it. In match one, we have Joseph with Venom versus Molly with Jack Jack. Joseph, take it away. Okay. Um. So, yeah, I got Venom. Uh, <laughs> commonly known as anti-Spider-Man. Mm. Um, but he is more than just that. So he's a. I'm going full full history, not just Venom and Eddie Brock, but uh, or as Eddie Brock, but the symbiote itself. So the actual creature that creates Venom. Um, so he he was the first vim symbiote to be seen on Earth uh, when he came back with Spider Man. Um, whole street Secret Wars thing, not important. Um, but it's an amorphous, liquid-like goo uh, that survives by bonding to a host um, and thrives off anger and bloodlust, at least initially. Um, and this one, there's a whole race of symbiotes, uh, but this one was cast out because it preferred to uh, protect the host rather than dominate and control the host. Um, so this is the this is the black sheep of symbiotes, which is kind of neat. Um, and it can move and shape shift as it needs to. Uh, we see with Venom that he, with Eddie Brock specifically, that it creates or looks like clothing on him, um, and it can also mimic its surroundings to act as like a camouflage. It's kind of like an octopus, but cooler. Um, so he, the symbiote, forms uh, a bond with the host um, and can actually uh, augment powers and feels emotions that the host feels. Uh, and it actually gains um, powers from Spider-Man uh, by bonding with his DNA and carries those powers over. So that's how he becomes the Venom that we see uh, later on um, as he steals it from Spider-Man, from Peter Parker. Um, so Spider-Man is the first important host and uh, had the most profound impact on the symbiote because uh, initially Spider-Man used him mostly it just as a suit, but once he realized it was like alive and could think and was controlling his emotions, he cast it out and uh, forcibly removed the symbiote from him. Um, so he, uh, he copied his powers and actually was able to develop complex emotions um, from this bond. And this is when the symbiote first learned about betrayal um, and started to resent humans and specifically Spider-Man. Um, and then some other stuff happened and he bonds with, uh, with Eddie Brock, um, who lost his job because of Peter Parker. So together they kind of formed anti Spider-Man. Um, and that's when they became known as Venom. And Eddie Brock is the most well-known host, um, of Venom. Uh, so Let's see, um, Eddie actually was the first host, because uh, there were a couple of minor hosts in between, um, 
but Eddie showed the symbiote compassion and kindness and actually saw it as a partner rather than a tool to be used or and vice versa. Uh, so the symbiote saw Eddie as a partner as well. Um, and they together they eventually wanted to do good and not just destroy Spider-Man um, because of the compassion that they uh, were both able to show each other. Um, but they had an on-off relationship. Um, so eventually... I believe Eddie Brock gets cancer, and uh, so the symbiote leaves him, which is kind of shitty, but, you know, it happens. Um, and tries to get back with Spider-Man. It's a whole ordeal, you know, oh, you got all God. these exes flying around. Unhealthy relationships. Um, uh, the other two main hosts that he uh, bonds with are Flash Thompson, and they became become Agent Venom. And actually worked with the Avengers and was an actual superhero for a while. And this is where Venom kind of really decided to be or wanted to do good and not just have a thirst for bloodlust. The alternative is that he also bonded with uh, Mark Gargan, who eventually turned to cannibalism because of the uh, all the... Uh, insane bloodlust that grew as like an anti flash thompson um so he really really got both ends of the the spectrum there with that um but he does eventually come back to brock and uh the symbiote and brock are considered to be with, like in love with each other at the end of the day they the true form of like love where they're just they need each other and no, it's it's a symbiote, Gabe. They they don't do that kind of can stuff. Morph into anything. That's what well, I suppose. <laughs> and you know, I not gonna lie, I was looking for some pictures for Dayton to pull up. Uh -oh. I literally searched "sexy Venom" and I was like, I'm not doing this. Never mind. That was a mistake. <laughs> um, but <laughs> uh, aside from that, um, no, there's a lot of complex emotions that go along with Venom that uh, a lot of people haven't explored in the past. Uh, and that's a uh, very an interesting thing. Um, let's see. Venom also, so he's eventually, because he copies powers, gets stronger. Um, and he is shown to be stronger than Spider-Man on multiple occasions, going, ranging from, like, just barely stronger to, like, killing, <clears throat> almost killing a version of the Hulk and, like, just absolutely ravaging uh, people. Um, so it's... Uh, it's a little variable there, um, but he does have uh, uh, quite a few powers like that. Um, and eventually he's able to hold a humanoid shape without a host uh, for brief periods of time, which is kind of, I don't know, I think that's kind of neat how he's expanded and, and formed. And that's Venom, man. All right. Thank you for the your... history. <laughs> <laughs> Molly? Give us uh, your argument for Jack Jack. All right. Uh, so, Jack Jack, I mean, he is the best superhero out there. Um, first of all, I'll just go into the physical attributes of Jack Jack. Um, everybody loves him. He's adorable. Love energy. Um, very playful. He always puts a smile on your face. You can go to bed very content and happy. Um, just going to throw this out there that. Venom's a little scary looking, so you might have to uh, wait a few hours before going to bed. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Jack Jack's suit is pretty awesome. It can have, he has, what, like 18 powers, and it can withstand and hold together through that 18 powers. Uh, he has a very cool hairstyle, um, one I wish I could uh, get sometime. <laughs> but <laughs> um, and then uh, he's just yeah I'm just gonna say he's just so much fun like I would want to hang out with him day to day <laughs> um, and then I'll just dive right into the superpowers now he has 18 superpowers and he's still young and could probably develop more as he grows um, some of them that are pretty cool is like uh, he can wall climb he can polymorph He's able to transform into, like, a demon, fire. He was a metal baby. He even turned into a giant baby. He can uh, phase and teleport. 
the cool one. I like laser eyes. I think that one's cool. Um, and then I would say that, uh, yeah, he just, there's many more you can explore through this. <laughs> I'm hoping they come out with a third one and he has probably like 32, you know, um, <laughs> 32 powers. Then, uh, I, I guess I can dive into the history too a bit for Jack Jack. Um, he was born with the powers, so it's just all natural stuff. It wasn't reliant on a symbiote or anything special. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all natural. Um, and I'll do my one last little bit. He's never lost a fight. He's a pretty strong little guy, only like, I think. He's not even a year old, so I don't I don't know any other Superman or Superwoman that has won a fight not even even at one years old. All right, well now let's get into our rebuttal period where you guys can give your opposing arguments. Uh, I'll go back to Joseph first, and then Molly, you can talk shit right back. Um, so Jack, Jack. It, he's a baby. He's emotionally unavailable, right? We're not dealing with these complex emotions here that we get with Venom. There's no, you know, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? You know, like, he's not fighting with himself. It's just, uh, he, he's a baby, and he he likes um, classical music and hates metal music. And that's about all you get with him. He likes his parents, doesn't like people he doesn't know. All right? Classic baby shit, no one cares. Um... He actually canonically forced his dad to uh, murder Syndrome uh, in, in the movie. He is the reason that Syndrome dies and the reason his dad kills Syndrome. Uh, so he's got murder on his hands. Um, also, he's a big Dumbo baby. Like, literally, <laughs> a big Dumbo baby. I Like, I, that's it. Uh, only shown as comedic relief. You know, not really driving the plot other than murder, apparently. Um, and yeah, you're saying he's going to grow up and like there's more powers. Well, he's just going to be like OP. Like he's he's going to be like Superman or, you know, uh, Captain Marvel where they're just like so strong. You have to just write them off as like being somewhere else when things happen because otherwise, oh yeah, Jack-Jack's here, we win. Oh, cool story, bro. Another day of living life where nothing interesting happens. Um, it's like Green Lantern, am I right? Hey, hey, jump God, in the gun in there. <laughs> you watch yourself. You watch yourself. <laughs> and, blind you know, I, I spent a solid 45-ish minutes this morning uh, researching uh, my arguments. And I got to say, the uh, fandom wiki page for Jack-Jack is embarrassingly short. Like, come on. There's just no info out there. Nobody, no, it, no one cares. He's If he's so great, why is his page only... I don't know, it takes me like eight scrolls to get from top to bottom, where we got the Venom page. One, there's a Wikipedia article that is a, uh, also a pretty long article, but the uh, marvel.fandom.com, this took me like days to scroll down. I got to tell you what, it is not an easy read. There's a lot of good info in there. I highly recommend it. So... That's Venom. And that's why Jack Jack's ass. It's not an easy read. It's, like <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to read. The word schizophrenic was on the page. I had to Google it. <laughs> Very informative. Right. Uh, Molly, anything else you want to say to Joseph? Um, yeah, so I searched Venom and it was listed as one of the worst movies ever <laughs> that had such a bad plot <laughs> and i didn't need to scroll for days to i well i could search do the search engine and scroll for days and see how bad of a movie it was through the poor <laughs> plot of it um <laughs> and then uh also venom does have murder on his hands as well a lot more murder than jack jack <laughs> you say jack jack has one and venom I mean, yeah, at one year to... old, he's got murder on his hands. Come on. But you're, he's well, supposed to... Never mind, never mind. Sorry, continue, <laughs> continue. I'm sorry. Venom, he made somebody into a cannibal. Who who does that? 
Um, and then I would also say with Venom's superpower, some of it is shape shifting. Jack Jack has that. Um, he has the ability to reproduce himself. Jack Jack can duplicate himself as well. Um, and a big thing is is that Venom has lost fights, multiple fights, plural. Jack <laughs> has lost none. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Uh, let's open up the floor for questions. I got questions. No I, 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 I'm going first. I'm going first, stage. You bastard! You bastard! <laughs> he, he does this every year. I, I know, know he does. Questions. He's power but tripping I'm himself. The host, but I got, I, I, I got, got a burning Google question. First. He's power tripping question. himself. <laughs> Joseph, I got a question for you. Yes. He gave us this this history all history of Venom. I, I just need you to tell me one sentence or less. Why is Venom the best superhero? I feel like yeah. you gave us a bunch of information. I just need to know what. Why did you pick Venom? Why is he the best? I apologize. I realize I got caught up in the history uh, again. Spent forty five minutes. Yeah, lost a lot in the spot, man. Mm -hmm. I know, and I I apologize that that was a stumble on my part. The reason Venom is the best superhero is because he is not just a superhero. He has to fight, and he decided that he wanted to do good, and he wants to uh, help people. He decided he wants to protect his host, not just control them. He decided and worked through it that he wants to, uh, yeah, be a hero. He tried the bad guy thing, and ultimately he hated the feelings that uh, came along with it. And, you know, Jack-Jack's just being told that he's a hero, and he's just got to deal with it. Like, or, you know, that's just how it is. Cool. Then there's no development there. Um uh, Whereas Venom has this uh, much greater story arc associated with him and uh, comes to these conclusions uh, through trial and error. That was a great one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> right, I like run -ons. I'm, I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Uh, so this one, this one's another question for Joseph here. So, Molly, <laughs> you had mentioned that Jack Jack has the ability to turn into a giant baby. Joseph? Is that what you will transform into if you end up losing this round? <laughs> I'm straight. I, I could I could have started midway. Like I I'm I'm ready to go at a moment's notice. <laughs> uh, Perk, you had a question? Yeah, I got it. it's more just like clarification. So I from listening to Joseph's rebuttal period, um, what I gleaned was that he said, uh, Jack Jack is so overpowered, it's not fun, yeah. and that. Venom has a long wiki page. Just the, the, those are the. That's what I'm supposed to get from from yeah. your rebuttal period. Okay. I just want to point out, you know, with the whole OP thing, no, none of us here did pick Superman or um, Captain Marvel. The closest one is Jesus, I will say, <laughs> uh, which is pretty OP. So that'll be interesting. But you know, that's. You know, no one, no one else went single for. Single mother is pretty powerful, dude. I don't know. Yeah, but <laughs> single moms aren't. Oh, okay, not the point. All right, I'm not. <laughs> Do we have any other questions from the press pool? We have Josh. Uh, yeah, I would say, Jack Jack, uh, with his parents giving him the cookie to like trap him all the time, I would consider that being defeated. You know, <laughs> In the second movie they get him with cookies all the time, over and over and over again. If I were a bad guy, I would get a cookie and just be like, hey. Yeah, yeah, stop fucking with me, please. And then <laughs> he's done. They haven't it. figured that out yet, though. And well, Jack I'm just definitely saying. growing older. Yeah, I'm just we'll saying. Mm -hmm. His love for cookies is already fading. Weakness as a kryptonite. Uh, anything else before we get to the voting? All I'm right. ready to vote. Let's do it. Everyone, vote. go to the sheet. We're in the first... Uh, first two columns here. Find your your own name on the left, and then put in Joseph's score and Molly's score, one through ten. Hmm. And I will allow decimal places. I'll allow point five. Gabe just got. What? What? what <laughs> why? Because I'm copying you. I put mine in first, man. I I watched you put yours up. Put mine in first. I don't even <clears throat> see your second score right now. What? Yeah, press okay. enter, Emily, and oh, Yeah, okay. yeah, okay, I'm copying you that, even though I can't see your numbers. I typed it in first, I swear. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Dayton, let me know when it's up on the stream, and I will announce it. All right. Uh, scores are in. Scores are in. Our winner, 
Match one, Molly with an average score of 7.6. Defeats Joseph with an average score of 6. We will see who Molly goes up against in round two and who Joseph will face in next week's first consolation match. And that will be determined by match two. We have well, no Jacob, Emily. Jacob, Jacob, I'm we need to go back to the bracket. I'm over. sorry, we go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we go back we gotta to the move bracket. the names. We I forgot I names. forgot if the score I forgot the score was in that screen or the screen. So Dayton is currently moving Molly ahead in the bracket. Yes. And Joseph down to the bottom, I believe. Uh yeah, I mean I I guess I can move his name down to the bottom. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, actually, I would I would like to make a note here that in so now this is our third year of recording. We've had two champs both fall in the first round. Back yep, in back years. Yep. Is this scripted, Jacob? Uh, I, you know? I think it's voter manipulation. I think it's yeah. biased. Jacob, Jacob's biased. weighing his, his vote, so it's worth more. So he can power I'm weighing my vote. Yeah. yeah. In the yeah. I didn't make the formula. I know you did. Dayton made, made the form Dayton made the spreadsheet. All right. Am I scripting this? <laughs> Dayton was so salty about him losing, you wanted to bring Joseph down with <laughs> That is my personality. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into match number two. We have Emily with Iron Man versus Gabe with Black Widow. Two MCU heroes at it. Yeah, uh, I think it's a good matchup. Emily, take us away. All right, I'm here to tell you that Iron Man is the best superhero. And I have some bulleted reasons as to why. Um, let's just get started. Iron Man is our generation's first MCU Hooper superhero, his movie in 2008. And let's be real, Marvel Entertainment put out their best hero to kick to kickstart their franchise. He single-handedly started started the MCU universe as we know it today. So that's what heroes do. Iron Man, Tony Stark, has the most MCU movie appearances in 10 out of 23 movies. Article was written in 2021, so a little fuzzy on where they stand. But this is meaning that his character arc and his story is by far one of the most popular, making him arguably the best hero. The Iron Man character was Robert Downey Jr.'s first role in a blockbuster film, and before the MCU movie, as we know, he was working on independent films, his music career, and struggling with a drug addiction. Now, RD, now that RDJ is famously successful and reportedly sober, a fictional character saved a real human's life, and that's what true superheroes do. That's enough background about the movies and how great they are. I want to dig into, like, like Joe did a little bit, like that true comic story background. Iron Man's not a government soldier or a warrior or some science experience, science experiment gone wrong. He's the most relatable superhero. He has no true powers. To his core, he's just like us, an engineer trying to find his place in the world. Truly heroic. Underneath the suits and wealth, he's just a guy trying to do some good, right? He's not paid by the government to do good. He doesn't need to be a hero for his livelihood. He's just hes just a businessman, and he's already doing great at it. Yet he chooses every day to wake up and use his resources for good. And those core values make a good superhero. Iron Man is one of the most incredible background stories. I don't know if you guys know, but he was actually an injured Vietnam prisoner of war. He then escapes, making him a true American hero on any account. On top of that, he takes an anti-communist stance and uses his own business to develop world-saving technologies for the Avengers and X-Men. The American Dream. His character arc in the comics is just as strong as in the movies. In the comics, he struggles with alcoholism, politics, multiple deadly injuries. But in the end, he overcomes all the things that make us human to become the ultimate man in the suit and the hero as we know it. In the movies... We meet him as a narcissistic playboy, only concerned with himself, but through the films, he slowly becomes the most selfless character of all, nearly dying multiple times until his ultimate sacrifice rests in Lastly, Gabe, I'm thinking you might say that Iron Man is nothing without the That's an argument I thought you might pull out, but I would respectfully disagree already. Underneath the suit, he's just like us. He's a flawed human being, yet chooses to do good. He is a genius, a billionaire, a playboy, and a philanthropist. Thank you. It was from the movie, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was trying to Google it, actually. <laughs> Gabe. All right. Uh, first off, welcome. Uh, 
this is a very similar thing that we're having here from last year when I'm against each other. I picked Black Widow after Iron Man because I think they're they're very similar. Uh, they have a yeah, lot of uh, yeah, they have a lot of like uh, similar redemption arcs and mm -hmm. um, purpose finding, I guess. So thought it'd be a good match. Um, but I wanted to say like as Simps the number four BW on Reddit claims. Uh, Black Widow's power is being a boss bitch while simultaneously being dummy thick. All right. Like she, just, <laughs> she just manages to have both of these high, you know, status items. Perfect, right. And Iron Man is a man. It's 2022, guys. That's kind of fucking gross. So it's just, I just want to put that up. So. Let's go a little bit on, on Black Widow. I put most of my stuff off of the uh, the MCU, but as you guys all know, um, Black Widow is constantly, constantly outgunned. Uh, just like Iron Man, she doesn't really have a superpower. She's not born with anything. She doesn't inherit anything, um, but she still goes through reckless abandon to try and save humanity. You know, she's fighting aliens with a pistol and sometimes some electric sticks. And that's about it. Like those dogs in Infinity War, she's like beating the shit out of them with a stick. Badass. Um, so she's always constantly outgunned, and and she had a lot of guilt, like Iron Man. Iron Man, you know, has uh, some guilt for selling weapons to some bad men who kill, you know, innocent people. Um, similarly, she um, was mind controlled for a, quite a while. If you guys have seen the film. Uh, she managed to break from that and decided that, you know, she wanted to use her powers for good and just kind of uh, try and wipe away that guilt by helping in any way she can. Um, she's also, you know, she's done everything from fighting on the front lines and these aliens to also helping uh, Captain America get laid constantly in Civil War, <laughs> the point of contention. She tries to hook him up, you know? I mean, that's a sign of a good friend. Does he need help? Superhero. <laughs> no, he's a fucking god but you know she she does what she can you know she tries to help out so you know that's a good friend and a good superhero <clears throat> um on top of that she also uh, was going around and helping everybody uh after the snap she kind of took the helm as iron man was you know trying to get back to earth uh and captain america was dealing with his shit uh she decided not to quit and kept in contact with even other characters to help around the universe uh, and the world to keep stability and uh, kind of grew into this great leader uh, going from an assassin to a leader to try and protect humanity and do everything she can uh, to get everybody back and ultimately did an ultimate sacrifice in the same film as Iron Man uh, leading to the dub so both of them sacrificing their lives for the dub I mean mad respect on both ends uh, let's see one more before I go to the rebuttal uh yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the day, she's just like a thick with three C's, dependable rock that proves to everyone you can be a strong, hot woman. While Tony teaches everyone you can be selfish as long as you're rich. So, yeah, that's all I got to say. Oh. All right. Emily, back to you to beat some sense into this man. Yeah, I <laughs> want to start out by acknowledging they are similar. This is 2021, 2022 now. Um, I was like, wait, is, I actually <laughs> had a second guess. That yeah, <laughs> um, that's sad. Anyways, um, I just, man, as as a woman, women are just not powerful, determined by their size. I just don't like that argument, Gabe. This is 2022. Get with it, man. Just because she's thick doesn't mean she's good. Um, but I, just, I also want to say before I get into like what I really have here is that Iron Man set the examples from what it sounds like. They do have a lot of similarities, except yeah, mad respect, but they used to be enemies. And I think that that's what Iron Man did was set the example because she was on the bad side of that first, right? So her first movie appearance was actually in Iron Man's second movie. So already we're we're here, right? I mean, it's just you don't you don't start out the franchise you being the best, you know, you're already in second. Movie. So, but I think the main point here is that she's a trained Soviet Russian spy. <sighs> Need I say more? I will. Um, so she's an employee <laughs> agent. She follows through because it's her job. Like, she literally gets paid where Iron Man is actually using his money for these efforts, right? She's she's getting paid and told what to do. But she actually attempts to defeat Iron Man at one point. So obviously we see she wasn't able to do that. And this is like old comic stuff. But um, she wasn't able to defeat the ultimate superhero. 
she's only a part of the Avengers because she was in love with Hawkeye at one point, which is like not dissimilar to following your high school boyfriend to college only to break up in the first semester and then on and off again until, you know, he eventually graduates and moves on. Um, so graduating as they both die for the creature. <laughs> but basically what I'm trying to say is she has weak convictions and ultimately no dedication to her real country. Yeah. She was brainwashed, but, she really only came out of that because she was in love with somebody like she had really other no ties to the states and why should we trust her i mean she could really change at any moment and turn on us and i'm just saying at a time like this um with what's going on in the world i'm just not sure we can trust her isn't she canonically dead yeah, yeah but like can't trust her corpse, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> might jump out like her char- like she's dead but her character we just can't trust her character mm-hmm. Also, Marvel Zombies, that's a show that's coming out soon, so. Ooh, fun. <laughs> Is it actually? Yeah. Oh, uh, Yikes. Your rebuttal? Yeah. Uh, I think it's interesting she was talking about morals because a lot of my uh, rebuttal is revolved around uh, the moral code of, of both of these characters. Uh, I think it's very different when you make a ton of money and riches beyond your wildest dreams uh, off of the backs of the 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 engines of war which is not pretty i mean we're seeing that now it's just it's not a pretty outcome um and again you know that was all by his own choice uh to for the capitalistic gains if you will uh where black widow quite literally had uh mind control so it was hard for her to to you know i don't know how it is in the comics but i'm talking mcu it's kind of hard to um to have free will when you're controlled with your mind so when she got breakthrough she immediately tried to sack or to to fix her her mistakes that she didn't even have control over and um she was extremely extremely dependable and way more stable than iron man throughout the films uh i don't know if you guys have seen uh avengers age of ultron but that whole movie uh exists because iron man created ultron and it killed thousands and tried to extinct the world uh black widow did not do that she's not smart enough for that uh, Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> Whose side are you on, Gabe? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to play devil's advocate with myself because I know it's going to come. Anyway. Um, yeah, and she didn't even hesitate uh, to uh, sacrifice herself to get the Soul Stone. Uh, in the film, Tony uh, kind of struggled uh, weighing his options of just his family versus you know that he created versus the world uh, that he lost. So I think that's that's pretty difficult. Um, yeah, she just like wasn't afraid to lose. She was always a leader. She was as stable as you can be. Uh, even in Civil War, uh, she was super level-headed and made the right decisions. Uh, where I think a lot of Iron Man's decisions ended up uh, causing a lot of harm for others. And while he ultimately did redeem himself, uh, I don't think uh, Black Widow, after she defected, had put anybody in extreme harm, let alone the world, in harm. All right. Uh, open up the floor for questions. Joseph has yes. first with the hand raise. Um, so I have a question for Emily. Um, you mentioned mm-hmm. multiple times that uh, Tony Stark, you know, started out just like us, you know, no, no superpowers. Uh, but he's the most purest definition of a child of nepotism. I don't think that really applies to all, most, or any of us. Um... So what's your question? So my question is, how can he be just like everybody else if he literally had this massive company, all this money just handed to him? Um, Because I I don't, looking around the room, I don't think that's happened to any of us um, or most people in this day and age uh, that we interact with. Um, So I'm just curious how that's like any, anyone else or everyone else. Yeah, I mean, definitely Tony's not like us. I mean war veteran none of us are that right um but i do want to say that tony didn't ask for this um his parents died like he was literally orphaned and given this company so i would say if you lost both your parents small price to pay i mean to become a billionaire right so (laughs) he did not ask for this he lost his parents and then used it for bad but good but ultimately being human is having flaws so i'm understand that yeah you're right 
capitalism, blah, 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 riches. We're over that story. But I think something good came out of it. And he didn't. He's just like us. He's flawed, you know. And I, he also has an engineering degree, which I thought was, was pretty cool. He's just trying to do some good in the world for to make up for the mistakes. The sins of the father do not come down on the son, Joseph. Okay. Hey, Joseph. Uh, fun fact Joseph, about Joseph. his engineering degree. I'm not done with... I have a question for Gabe, too. No, no. I have a question for you, Joseph. Okay. You were, you, were, you were making fun of Iron Man for getting money from his parents. Didn't you get an allowance all the way through college? <laughs> That's what I should have said. Damn it. That's Shut what you should have said, Emily. That was so good. Also, you you're going to inherit you're gonna inherit your family's blueberry farm. That's straight nepotism right there. <laughs> not, though. I could, but I'm not. Is that a choice, though? See, Iron Man wasn't given a choice. Yeah, he was. Hey, Joseph oh, just got the died. allowance wired into yeah, his account. Yeah, but he doesn't have to... You can Let Joseph ask a like, second question. I can sell it anyway. We'll just pretend that I asked that question because I was going to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's my question, Joseph? Uh, it's more of a summing up of some of your thoughts than an actual question. But would you say that uh, Black Widow uh, hits you with a stick but is also dummy thick? <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad you asked me this question <laughs> because overwhelmingly yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I, I want to I want to ask how many how many C's do you have? Oh, I wrote three C's, okay. but I ran out of paper. Otherwise, I would have kept going. Okay. That's acceptable. Then I agree. Cool. Yes. Hmm. Uh, I need follow up uh, yeah. with that, Gabe. Yes. Uh, it's a very simple uh, question. Yes. We all know you have a thing for redheads. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing this so I'm, into I'm it. just gonna right. I'm gonna ask you straight up. Did you pick Black Widow because you're attracted to her and she's a sexual object, or did you oh. pick her because she's actually a good character? Because I'm not sure. It no, seems like you're, you're leaning more picked, on the farmer. No, I generally picked her because it was close to Iron Man, 100. percent Dayton, I think you're you're as skeptical as I am with that. Well, I I'm I'm <laughs> I'm skeptical of of why you asked this question, Jacob. We might be breaking the fourth wall here, but you chose Daredevil and Daredevil. Has he can detect people's heartbeats to act as a human polygraph? So, yeah. what is your reading of Gabe? Do you think he's telling the truth, oh. or did he actually hypersexualize Black Widow, as his heartbeat would suggest? You know, the amount of times he used the term "dummy thick," I'm inclined yeah. to believe that he oversexualized her. Yeah. So I'm a little bit. Uh, he didn't a little bit say it that sexually, though. I didn't. I said that that was a, she could do both. Yeah. You know? Like. Medically, like a medical. <laughs> yeah, if, if you were to bring a doctor into this, they'd be like, "Yeah, she's certified dummy thick." Put a stamp on this shit. Are there any other questions that we need to get through here? I'm I'm done. I'm done. Are we um, good? Oh, Joseph. What What was the name of that Reddit user you quoted? And yeah. was that not actually uh, you? Um, oh, simps, oh, simps conspiracy. Simps for BW69. Okay. Yeah. BW meaning Black Widow. Black Widow. I'm, I'm yeah. Guessing. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and 69 meaning. If it was yeah. one more B, it would have a different connotation. <laughs> it's time to vote. It's time to vote. Uh, everyone go to the sheet and put in your... <laughs> scores <laughs> keep in mind yeah. i won with iron once so i'm not afraid <laughs> is it more sexist <laughs> to vote against the girl <laughs> arguing or for <laughs> the character <laughs> you, you know <laughs> vote whoever had the better argument and who presented uh. it better <laughs> Just waiting on Molly. I'm trying to type it in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was, I was I was checking to see if there's any internet internet issues. Can I just <laughs> tell you what I give? <laughs> we can okay, we can type it in. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so I'll give Emily an eight, and then a game a seven point five. Very close. The close race. Oh, wait, hold on, hold oh. on. Joseph changed, so changing his... So, I've, I've assumed Gabe was first, and... I oh, yeah, sorry, Emily, yeah, Emily's the, the first. Um, all right. That was my... Wow. All right, all right, wait. What a close one. All right, scores Gabe's are in, scores are in. Scores are in. Emily narrowly defeats Gabe with an average score of 8. Gabe coming in at 7.8. That's a point two difference. I think this is what happened very, very last close. year, except the other way around. Yeah. They, like, barely beat her, so... And you know what? I could see it. I think that was a very close uh, argument there. You're working uh, against yourself, Gabe. I think a little bit. But... Was I? 
Yeah, well, I do that a lot. <laughs> you can't play devil's advocate. Yeah. <laughs> Confidence. Confidence is yeah. key. I think you gotta uh, you gotta know your flaws, man. No, it was a good fight, man. Dayton, let's go back to the bracket and update it, please. All right, back to the bracket. Moving the names. Yeah, I think, uh, Put me with that Joseph. Name, please. Is that yeah, me? back It'll to be... season one, season baby. One. <laughs> It'll be Molly versus Emily. Is that correct? Yes. And Joseph versus Gabe. Yes. All right, and I I need to go to the bathroom, so we're not gonna switch off for this scene. So just talk about why Gabe's bad at debating shit. Oh, I actually <laughs> right. I think that uh, oh, okay. I I think that it wasn't as close. I think Emily actually like you guys tied for me, and I think Emily kind of worked it back a little bit by saying that Iron Man is a billionaire playboy just like us. <laughs> Uh, I think because a couple times he said just like us, and it's like no, <laughs> no, we, we're not billionaires. But hey, he's the rest no of your power. argument was so well fleshed out. You know? Well, it's it's funny because like when you originally said that Emily, my my has it's funny. I think we're all picking different things of why he's not like us. To me, it's like I'm not a fucking genius. Like Tony Stark's well, a certified too. genius. Uh -huh. But then, but then you said, but he's he's an engineer just trying his best. I'm like, I am an engineer trying my best. Yeah. So and he got, he's closer he to go. us than like people who have powers. You know what I mean? Like some yeah. like he's closer to us than Jack Jack. Okay, like that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Jack Jack. Hey, Jack Jack's a cute baby. baby. Right? <laughs> I would baby. hope he's closer than a baby. <laughs> <laughs> When I wrote this, I don't think I knew as much about Black Widow, and I, like, didn't know she didn't have power. So a lot of my argument was, like, hitting on this, like, oh, he's a human, et cetera. And then oh, I, like, she, re she I read... super her, strength or something? I read her shit. The only thing I could find is that she was, like, ge like some, like, kind of weird genetic stuff that they did, but not, she doesn't uh, have power. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's kind oh, of why the argument hit wrong. <laughs> I forgot to ask this, in the, but hmm. do you have any, uh, any thoughts to the rumor that Tom Cruise will be playing an evil... Tony Stark, Iron Man, in the new Doctor Strange movie? I think that, I don't know. I think it could be good. I just, I really like RDJ a lot. Like, truly, that was, like, one of the first movies I, like, enjoyed in the, I was the first, but mm -hmm. really one of my favorites in the MCU, so it'll be hard to, like, see a movie without him. But Yeah. I, I, I don't think, think it's going to happen, but it's a very strong rumor right now. People have, people just want Tom Cruise as Iron Man, so. He could do see. it good. They do? Yeah. yeah. This because like Scientology, I think, and it's Tom Cruise whole thing. Ooh. Dude, what uh, the wait, fuck did I just walk big guy now? Like Scientology, like yeah. Why does that make him want to be in the in the show? I don't get it. Fans movie. want Tom Cruise to be Iron Man. I, I don't. That's that. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Ooh, fans who are I don't know. Fans? Give who are look fans? them up. They're on. The, they're they're friends with fucking <laughs> Black Widow Simp sixty nine over there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. Simp's the number four. By the way. <laughs> all right. Dayton, are we ready to we are, move into match three? We are. Where we have Jacob representing Daredevil versus Dayton with Green Lantern. Not going to lie. I forgot that was... Go. I forgot we were round three. I know. I'm like, I got to get my shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So, yeah, I'll go first and then Dayton and then we'll do the normal rebuttal period. So, all right. Today, I'm talking about Daredevil, a.k.a. the man without fear. AKA the devil of hell's kitchen. Talk about some badass nicknames right there. Uh, but before I get into it, I want to ask y'all, how do we judge what the best superhero is, right? What does that mean? Does it mean they're the strongest? Does it mean they have the coolest powers or the most heroic? No, it means none of those things. Because guess what? Superheroes aren't real. At least the comic book ones we're talking about today, right? They're a, a, a source of entertainment for us, right? So therefore- Jesus isn't real? I said the comic book once, all right? <laughs> he did, he did. He single did. mothers I knew, aren't I, real. I, don't want, not, I don't want Perk to say that, oh, single mothers aren't real. I'm not saying that. The comic book <laughs> superheroes we're talking about today are not real, right? They're for entertainment purposes. So therefore, the best superhero is the one that is the most compelling, the most interesting to watch, the most interesting to, to read about, right? Uh, you know, and we could go back to the comics, but let's be honest. All of us, we're watching shows, we're watching movies, right? That's how we're kind of getting our superhero fix these days, which is why. Daredevil is the best superhero because the Daredevil Netflix show is one of, if not the best superhero like show or piece of content in the last, you know, however many years. It's fucking incredible. And the reason it's fucking incredible is that Daredevil is an incredible character. He's so fun and compelling to watch, right? He has these all these different sides to him, right? Firstly, 
he's a blind man, right? He's dealing with a disability. Granted, he has other abilities that can help compensate, but he, there are still certain things he can't do. He can't watch a movie, right? He can't really use a smartphone, right? Uh, and people will see him as a blind man and make assumptions about him, right? So he's dealing with this prejudice from others. Uh, he's also a lawyer, right? Uh, he's a public defender trying to stand up for those in his community that don't have a voice, um, trying to help out uh, those that are, you know, getting screwed by the system, right? Uh, and he's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to put, bring these bad people to justice through the correct way, right? The correct justice system, and yet it's very corrupt, right? So then what does he do in face of this corrupt system that he's trying to, to push through? He becomes this vigilante, right? He's uh, going out and just handing out beatdowns to people that are not getting their due, that don't, that slip through the, the cracks of the, the justice system, right? Uh, you know, as he's beating the shit out of them. And you're like, this is very fun to watch. People getting their comeuppance. But then... The last part, he's also a devout Catholic, and he's like, how do I reconcile the, this, the amount of violence I'm doing with my faith? I'm supposed to be this, you know, God-fearing man, but I'm also dealing out so much pain uh, to these people, right? Because all these things about him, they're just constantly in conflict, and he's trying to, to reconcile and deal with. And it's just so fascinating to watch him and his character arc as he progresses throughout his story, right? So that alone, I think, is enough to want to watch him. But then on top of that, he is a superhero in that he has these supernatural abilities where he has all of his four sentences that he remains to have are extremely heightened, right? And uh, his fighting style is just badass as shit, right? He's got these two batons. He's, you know, blind, so he's, like, ducking out of things and just beating shit out of people. It's fantastic. Uh, he can use his heightened sense of, like, smell and taste, do some detective work, you know, figure out chemical compounds that are in stuff. Um, and then he also has a great rogues gallery in Kingpin and Bullseye. Um, that are like great villains and, and fun to watch, along with some of his best friends being like Spider Man. Like, you tell me you don't want to see Daredevil and Spider Man hanging out together, it's fantastic. So, all these things compelling character, fun fights and abilities, awesome supporting characters and the villains and heroes around him. He's just a fantastic character to watch, and you're just always entertained and never let down. So, yeah, Daredevil, amazing character. Not much more I need to say there. Dayton, go ahead. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Jacob. <clears throat> so, much like Daredevil. Green Lantern also fights against injustice. As members of the Intergalactic Law Enforcement Agency, or the Green Lantern Corps, they do fight against injustice across the universe, not just limited to Hell's Kitchen, which is a measly 540 acres, or, or approximately 0.84 square miles. And if anybody has ever been to the Hell's Kitchen region in New York City, which I have, they know that it's incredibly small. Uh, so, I don't know. Right there, very, very large uh, difference in, in the amount of area that they patrol. But, anyway, Jacob, I know that you were super, sorry, you were super interested in why I chose Green Lantern. Ever since I was a young boy, I have had just an obscene obsession with Green Lantern. He is, he is quite literally every first grader's dream, okay? I don't know about, I don't know about everybody here. But I used to engage in, in multiple imaginary fights with my friends. And I would be like, oh, I'm going to shoot you with a pistol. And then like, no, no, I just generated a shield that blocks for your pistol. And then, and then your friend's like, oh, I just whipped out an AR. And they're like, it can go through your shield. And then, oh, psych, I just, I just generated armor that can get rid of your, your AR bullets. Okay, you are, you are honestly a human 3D printer. That's just indestructible. Like, that's quite literally what it is. And it's powered by your willpower. That's literally something that anybody can change about themselves. You can, you can say, okay, I need to have stronger willpower. I need, to, I need to fix this about myself so I can have stronger powers. You're not only, there, there's good character development there if you can, if you can heighten your willpower, right? Uh, and added on to that, the suits can literally survive any environment that they're in, okay? They can survive the vac the near vacuum of space, okay? Daredevil can't even survive a human fart bomb because he gets overstimulated. <laughs> Alright? The suits remove the need to eat, sleep, and poop, okay? That is quite honestly another one of my dreams. If I never had to sleep, um, and I do, I hate pooping. Who the hell likes pooping? It's just a waste of fucking time. Eating I kind of like. I like rice and beans. Anybody that knows me knows that. Okay. And I, I will say that the ring does come with some powers. All right. You can't heal any injuries. All right. 
you know, you can't heal people's blindness, people's susceptibleness to uh, susceptibility to farts, um, to, to loud noises, anything like that. Uh, so that is that is a definite drawback. Um, and honestly, I, I think that uh, one of the coolest things about Green Lantern is that every single Green Lantern has an oath that rhymes. They usually follow the rhyme scheme of A, 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 or A, A, B, B. And now, now, Jacob, Jacob, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, oh no, he's going to rhyme. Psych! I realize that's a lime. All right? I'm in this bracket to climb. Now in those score sheets, drop that dime. <laughs> All right. I thought you were just going to actually go into the Green Lantern Oath uh, there, which I might get into in a second. But mm, here's mm -hmm. here's my issue with Green Lantern. What a fucking disappointment of a character. Just wow. an absolute snooze fest of a character. All right. Because here's the deal. Yeah, like you said, you have one of the coolest abilities ever been conceived because you can literally do anything. Which, granted, I think you run into the Superman problem that Joseph has said earlier. It was just like too overpowered. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like. You can't really, there's no really sense of danger a lot of the times. Granted, you said they can't heal, so they get hit. They're kind of fucked. But it's like, they can come up with anything, so it's kind of boring. But here's the problem. You give it to a guy named Hal Jordan, right, who's like the main Green Lantern, who's just the most fucking milk toast, bland, white dude you could ever get as a fucking character, all right? And he's literally just given this power because he's already at a point where he's already a hero. Like, the, the Green Lantern dude is dying, and he sends out a, whatever, a, a pulse. And he's like, all right, who's worthy? All right, found a worthy guy. Let's get this him. And he's given the ring because he's an utterly honest and born without fear, right? Okay, so he's already a hero. He doesn't have to go on a character arc. There's no character development needs to happen. He's already a hero. So it's boring to watch, all right? And then you get into what does he actually use these abilities for? And I'm going to go into the fucking horrible Green Lantern movie <laughs> that came out with Ryan Reynolds, right? Maul already talked about Venom being one of the worst superhero movies ever. Green Lantern's worse. Uh, <laughs> widely regarded as the worst superhero movie ever made. Uh, and what I'm talking about, like, these characters exist to, for our entertainment and for uh, us to watch and be compelled by. The only Green Lantern property right now that exists is this movie, and it's fucking trash. But in the movie, you're like, all right, so you got, like, this fighter jet guy uh, or your test pilot guy being Green Lantern. What's he going to do? Maybe do, like, a giant, like, cool fist. Or, but, you know, he makes, like, fucking anti-aircraft World War II batteries. It's like, what the fuck are, what? It is stuff that makes no sense. Uh, or he's or he's making the uh, planes list like hurl at people. It's just, it's just very off-putting. It's like the very much like, oh yeah, I'm an American. So I like military shit. Look at all these cool mini guns. I don't know. It's just like not what you want to see from Green Lantern. Um, and then here's the last thing. Oh, I guess, sorry, one more thing about what he used it for. In the, <laughs> if you watch like animated shows, he's literally the Justice League's taxi. They're like, hey, we got to go to our planet. Hey, Green Lantern, make a little spaceship for us and fly us around in it. He's a fucking taxi driver, all right? He's he's the mm. butt of the joke for the Justice League. And finally, he's a fucking cop. Dayton, I thought we were on the same page, A cap. I didn't realize you were going to say, oh, blue lives matter. Or I should say green lives matter. He's a fucking cop, all right? And you're out here saying people's lives in Hell's Kitchen don't matter because, oh, bigger scale at stake. You're saying single moms in Hell's Kitchen don't matter when they're getting <laughs> abused, all right? Daredevil's going to save that lady. Green Lantern isn't. He's like, oh, I got to go to another planet so I can beat up some minorities, you know? Get the fuck out of here. Green Lantern sucks. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so basically it boils down to movie bad, I'm going to neglect all of the comic books, therefore Green Lantern bad. Um, More, so, he's a cop and he's boring. <clears throat> okay, well you're a lawyer and lawyers go straight to hell, everybody knows that. At least cops have a chance. <laughs> so I mentioned this a little bit earlier, right? How, how uh, Hell's Kitchen is approximately like 0.84 miles, square miles, um... It depends on your on your exact definition of Hell's Kitchen, um, <clears throat> but an airport radar can service over 1,100 square miles. All right. So my question is one: Why doesn't he patrol past Hell's Kitchen? Is he actually strong enough and, and adept enough to patrol further past Hell's Kitchen? Um, a, a quick back of the envelope envelope calculation is that. Uh, Hell's Kitchen is approximately 0.07% of what an airport uh, radar can service. So, 
And actually, his his radar was nerfed even further from that. They were like, oh, sorry, even that's too powerful for this man. We gotta nerf him. He doesn't have radar anymore. He just has proximity sense. All right, like, seriously, like he needs all the help that he can get. Uh, and also, you mentioned the fact that Green Lantern. <sighs> you really did me dirty here. You said you said that. The Green Lantern is a bland man. I forget what exactly you said. You said that he's milk toast. Milk toast. Milk toast. Okay. <laughs> well, what about what about this common trope for you? Ah, radioactive substance. Ah, ah, give me superpowers. Okay. What the hell? How That's many, his origin story. It's not his character. How many how many superheroes? How many superheroes are product of radioactive waste? Okay. That's a product of the fucking Cold War propaganda. Serious bullshit. <laughs> Serious bullshit. Okay? And I know I mentioned this earlier, right? About overstimulation, how a fart bomb could, could overcome Daredevil. Well, how about this, okay? Green Lantern summons an entire EDM festival and summons an incarnation of Skrillex. And he just starts blasting scary monsters and nice sprites, okay? This base would have this man boosted into the ground as fast as possible. All right? And I should have organized this a little bit better, but honestly, Daredevil's kind of a pervert. His radar sense, when he had it before he was nerfed, he can see through clothes with that, okay? What What the fuck is with that, okay? Do you really want to be supporting this man who's a lawyer who's supposed to be professional as he's a peeping Tom looking through people's clothes with his radar sense? And you might say, oh, yeah, no, no, no. He doesn't, he doesn't actively look at that, right? Dude, if you see a freaking pair of boobs in the corner of the room, you're looking at them, okay? <laughs> You you can't even you can't even uh, argue that one. All right, and don't even don't even get me started on his on his fucking cane weapon. It's an engineering nightmare. <laughs> uh, we go before the questions. Burke. Yeah, uh, question for Jacob. Uh, you said that uh, Daredevil would save the single mother in Hell's Kitchen. Are you insinuating that she needs saving? <laughs> oh yes that's, that's a little presumptuous, presumptuous of you yeah, that is that was presumptuous of me and i apologize perkins I, I guess i was trying to say that on a small human scale daredevil is going to be there for anyone who needs help green lantern where is he okay. he's, he's off in the galaxy somewhere okay you know? i gotcha as long as you live in, within the area of hell's kitchen you if know, you're two blocks thing. out you're sol Hell's Kitchen is obviously where he's from, where he's based. He can move around like him and Spider-Man go to Manhattan all the time. All right, I mean, dude, that's literally like a quarter mile <laughs> away. <laughs> Whatever, you know what I'm saying. Jigen's main argument is that Daredevil patrols a small area, Green Lantern patrols big area. Therefore, that's not, better. dude. That's straw man. Jacob, I had a uh, question for you. Yes, please. Not dissimilar to Perks, unfortunately. You made you made a bold assumption that people who are blind don't watch TV or don't use smartphones, but those are not true statements. So how can you be a credible advocate for, for somebody who's blind when you're just throwing out falsity? That? I apologize if I said that they can't. I meant to say that they don't experience it the same way we do, right? Even in the show, there's actually a point where um, Daredevil beats up a thug and he has some information on a text message, but he can't read it because it's a screen. So he has to go to his friend to read it for him. But they do have tools like... He can, uh, there's like, I don't know what it's called, but it's actually really cool. It's like a Braille keyboard that'll text go through speech. stuff and it'll take the top of the Braille and a thing so you can read it. Also, text speech is a thing too. But, you know, it's not going to be experiencing the same way that we do, Emily. And he's going to experience a different, uh, you know, life than we do. All right. Joseph? Um, this is a speculative question. Uh, I, I can't imagine the answers out there. I just want your, your thoughts and opinions. Uh, do you think the character De daredevil was created and like the whole like idea uh was based purely off the saying that justice is blind i think that's definitely an influence for sure because they, they show that these the, guys were at a bar drunk and like yeah justice is blind <laughs> like oh yeah we should make one of those guys and like that's it based on the fact he was created in the 1940s i think it's very very possible <laughs> interesting any other questions, or should we get to the voting? All right, let's vote. No. This tough. Well, Dayton did say to drop that dime, so I I feel compelled. <laughs> I you said know, no dimes, uh, hold, you, plural. You, you got plural the dimes. So you know, I I feel like that's. He said, "Drop a dime." He didn't say where to put it, though. 
Ooh. That is that is true. Um, that is true. That is true. And you didn't say how many dimes you could drop. All right, there we go. There we have it. All right, and scores are in. Scores are up. Dayton takes the win with a 9.3 out of 10 against Jacobs 8.2. Let's Dayton go. Returns to his former glory. Will he be able to hold out for the rest of the tournament? Fantastic match, Jacob. Fantastic match. Let's go back to the bracket. You will update that. Moving Dayton along. And he will go up against the winner of our final match today. And then I will go down to the consolation. And I will fight the loser. Not looking good for the OG uh, podcast boys. For the, for yeah. the yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. This shit is scripted. This shit is scripted. <laughs> it's fucking rigged. I say it. Dayton did make the spreadsheet. And so far, he's doing great. The rest of us doing shit. So. <laughs> did I rig like, the I, formula? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You guys I blame having to people. go into this cold. That That's just me, though. Mm. All right. Are we ready to go, Dayton? We are indeed ready to go. All right. Let's get into the final match. We have Josh with Jesus Christ. Yes, you heard that right. Versus Perkins representing single mothers. Single mothers. Josh, the floor right. is yours. <laughs> okay, so uh, I actually convened with Joseph earlier about how to structure my argument, so I'm just going to be reading the entire New Testament to kick it off. <laughs> hey, I told you, I'd give you full 10 for, if you do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to go. I didn't really know how to think, like, you know, who's the best superhero, so I'm just going to go, like, uh, bracket one would be, like, popularity. Uh, there's currently roughly 2.38 billion Christians in the world. Uh, I would say if there are 2.38 single mothers in the world, we're screwed. <laughs> or 2.38 billion fans of single mothers. I, I don't know. I don't know. We're screwed, probably. And if you could count that, let me know. Let me know what your tally was. Uh, second little bracket, I'll say superpowers. Uh... The power of healing. Heal basically whoever he wanted to. Didn't matter. Exorcism. <laughs> pulling the devil out of people whenever he wanted to. Didn't matter. Resurrection. Probably the most iconic. Now we have the Easter Bunny to represent that. And that makes total sense because the Easter Bunny goes and you know, puts eggs in your yard and you go find them the same way that Jesus rolled the stone away, the stone away from the tomb and <laughs> flew out of it. Similar. <laughs> And uh, also, the also iconic control of nature. So, water into wine, you know, a bunch of fish from one fish, a bunch of bread from one bread. That's like a whole party right there, whenever you want. Just <laughs> roll up with whatever party, whenever you want. So, saving people, partying, never dying. I don't know, name, name another fictional thing or non-fictional thing that can do that. <laughs> uh, another... Bracket is inspiring fanfics, and I know a lot of people here love fanfics, so uh, I'll go with the first one. Uh, Book of Mormon, I'm going to cover my ass here, say, you know, maybe it's not a fanfic, maybe it's real, I, I don't know. But either way, someone wrote a whole ass book and created a whole ass uh, dominion of followers based on Jesus coming to America, which was kind of like a spin off, you know, like a quick spinoff after the new testament like yeah also he went to america and did this jacob <laughs> might like this one there's a fanfic of jesus going to japan during his <laughs> earlier years to learn some healing and then going back and that was supposedly how he had learned to like heal everyone so there's another little thing and then there's a i don't really know the origin of this one but there's a, a jesus and john wayne kind of fanfic rolling around there's and there's <laughs> countless others uh yeah i think everyone's familiar with jesus so i'll leave it at that <laughs> all right perkins all right so uh a lot of people might not be familiar with single mother so i'll do a little bit of background you know <laughs> so a single mother first appeared in <laughs> x-men 367 the x chromosome mm. um yep and and her backstory is actually that uh her husband one night went out for uh to grab a 
a pack of radioactive smokes. So, and he never came back. <clears throat> and she, uh, she caught caught superpowers off that. So, basically, her her main superpower is that she's a time traveler, and she's also got super speed. You know, because uh, as a single mother in 2022, uh, in this society, she has to work 200 hours a week, doing six jobs, and uh, uses her time travel powers to get that done. And on top of all of that. She has to uh, make sure to get Tyler to ballet uh, and Kyler and Bryler to their soccer practices, you know, <laughs> three times a week. And that scheduling is impossible if you don't have time travel. Uh, so that's that's basically a single mother for you. Um, I'm going uh, I'm to touch a little bit on on Jesus. Uh, yeah, so he's kind of a bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, uh, like... Come on, you know, he comes off pretty heavily as like a, my dad's a lawyer, he'll smite you kind of guy, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and Josh was talking about his powers, but they were all, you know, mumbo jumbo. Uh, ask all the kids of uh, religious healing families that died of cancer. <laughs> oh. uh, and, and like the, the making lots of fish and bread. That was all. It was just way overblown. He just had one of those uh, industrial-sized boxes of of goldfish, you know, the cheesy one. <laughs> Flavor blasted even, so people people got really hyped about it, but it wasn't all that special. Um, and then yeah, on on top of the the resurrection uh, that you were talking about, actually, uh, he just went on a on a three day bender. Um, he, he wasn't actually dead. He you were talking about how he went to to America for the Mormons. Um, and yeah, he actually, he did that in the three days between, uh, when he died and when he was resurrected, but he just went to Atlantic city. <laughs> yeah. And then he came back, you know, he, he turned a lot of water out there into wine, drank all that up, just degenerate alcoholic Jesus. Uh, and then, and then he came back and pretended to roll away the stone. All right. Back to you, Josh. You're, you're muted. You're right muted. You're you're muted. muted yeah. Oh my bad. Was that the rebuttal? Was that? Oh, I guess I was just initial. Yeah I, yeah, I have a little bit more, but not. Oh, you much. get two rebuttals. That's kind of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit bracket, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, single mothers. I guess uh, Casey Anthony. Uh, that's your hero, Casey Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's the best you could think of. <laughs> And then you want, uh, you want a response? No, I think well, you made it pretty clear. Super, uh, single moms are your, you know. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. She's no longer a single mother. She <laughs> might be single though. I'm not sure, but either way. Uh, and then I'll give you. I'll just drop this uh, stat. Uh, six out of seven of the most deadliest shootings in the in the U.S. were uh, committed by people who are raised in fatherless homes, single mothers. So. That's interesting. That's my counter argument. Yeah, but why didn't Jesus stop those shootings from happening? Ooh. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. It's cuz it's cuz he's not actually powerful. He's he's barely even a guy. Well, the thing like, that's he, dude, he power scales lower than a couple 2 by 4s nailed together. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm done. Does anybody, have anything else before we get into questions? No, All right. I'm, <laughs> I'm opening the floor up for her. questions. All right. Emily. I guess I'm kind of looking for a response from both of you on this one, but it, it's clear to me that it, people were skeptical of, of Jesus and his superpowers, right? He, he, like a lot of superheroes here, kind of wanted to like keep his identity on the DL. Where single mothers, on the other hand, it's pretty apparent somebody's a single mother. <clears throat> it's, it's made known, if you will. So... From a superhero perspective, what are the the pros and cons of keeping your identity concealed versus versus not keeping it concealed? Mm. Like, what's the argument for why your individual superheroes chose to do what they do? Mm. Uh, go with Josh first, to... then. Perk. Oh, okay. Uh, Perk. No, Perk, you're fine. You're fine. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, it's uh, it's generally uh, it makes sense for a single mother to hide her identity uh, because of this this society that we live in uh, that is just overly defined by the patriarchy, uh, which actually might stem back to a large majority of the world uh, believing in some guy and his kid and being, 
Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> Jesus is a sexist, on record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh? Uh, okay, well, Jesus wanted to be known because he wants to get as many people into heaven as possible, so he's trying to convince as many people as possible to believe in him, so that way they can be saved and go to heaven. All right. Uh, Dave, do you have a question? Yeah, I got a question for, for both of you. Okay. All right, uh, I'll start this off with, with Josh, just because his voice is already warmed up from just finishing that question. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so you uh, there's a lot of people, and I, I say a lot, figuratively there's 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 people out there that think that they are the reincarnation of jesus what are your thoughts on that yeah there's a lot of kids who think they're fucking spider-man too i thought i was flat stanley when i was like five years old i made my whole family <laughs> flat stanley i was insane that's why <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think those insane people are are capable of being saved yeah i mean i don't know i guess yeah Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and Perk, this one, this one hits close to home for me because the, the superhero that I picked fights vigilantes across the entire universe. Um, what are your thoughts that single mothers, based on Josh's statistic, which I haven't, I haven't, uh, you know, reviewed or anything like that. They are single mothers, single-handedly, right? Actually single-handedly are making people who just give Jacob, Jacob's and my hero, um, vigilantes to fight. What are your thoughts on that? Sorry, I'm trying to follow. You. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of strewn about, but okay. <laughs> I'm saying I'm <laughs> saying single mothers dead. single mothers create vigilantes. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'd say uh, the stats are are false and actually uh, mm. zero out of seven children of single mothers are are uh, bad guys interesting okay Not peer reviewed okay <laughs> yeah no my source is uh uh google.ca oh okay <laughs> okay yeah very nice thank you <laughs> that's perkins a great joke uh any other questions i've got one yeah. um i think arguably these two superheroes have um larger fan bases than um any of the other superheroes we talked today uh, Jesus having the whole religion thing and uh, single mothers having their Facebook groups. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I guess the question for both of you guys is uh, what do you think? Do you think those those groups um, increase your superhero's power? Uh, you think it's a detriment? Like what do you think these followings and Facebook groups uh, do for the world? Oh, yeah. Uh, so... I uh, I think those support groups are important because the uh, the single mothers of the world have kind of they have the ability to pool their strength tactically mm. through the magical powers of Facebook groups, mm. um, and you can actually tell their their power. It's it's tangible because unlike everyone else today, uh, my superhero is real. <laughs> so like they actually have tangible power. Okay. Josh, you have anything? Okay, I would say, well, Jesus and, and the and the follower base, his power is kind of independent. They're they're not related to each other. I would say, however, for single mothers, it's probably to the detriment of them because they do get in these circles. And you know, I would like to see the overlap of flat earthers, QAnon, you know, anti-vax, <laughs> and single mothers, because it's probably like at least seventy percent, at least. Well then, I'd I'd quite like to see the uh, the the overlap of followers of Christ and tot touchers. <laughs> I think it's time to vote. <laughs> well, I got a question. <laughs> Holy right, shit! Right, Desert, Unrelated <laughs> to that comment, right? So Perkins, you. You know, and this could have been an assumption on our end. Uh, you know, you you announced that your your hero was single mothers. Actually, in the chat, you just said single mother, I believe. Correct. Um, and then you came out with your argument of the X Men character, and I think everyone else just kind of ignored that and asked zero questions or regarding the X Men character at all. 
And you also were defending single mothers as the plural, like an actual mother raising a child without, you know, another uh, partner. I'm just incredibly confused over which okay. one you sure. are arguing. And, you know, I, I just feel like you're kind of... I'll clear this up for you getting, here. So using the, two sides here. What happens, what happens is sometimes in comic books, there are multiple iterations, right? Oh. So the first single mother superhero... Uh, was in X Men three sixty seven. You can look it up. No, oh, I believe you. Yeah, you can you can check me on that. Uh, and then since then, uh, the single mothers of the world have spread. So it's it's oh, a bit okay. of a web now. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. As a yeah, it's a new universe, Joseph. Okay. No, I didn't, I didn't I realize just... single mothers were invented so recently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, right. it's a new, new up and coming religion. <laughs> let's uh let's get into the the tallies here everyone put in your numbers i don't want to come back next year <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a close one and the final score is in now all right, and oh results are God. in. Oh my God! Wow. <laughs> are they updating? They are. They are. Josh, the narrowest of victories with eight point seven versus Perks eight point six. God oh damn! Gosh. That's what close. a nail biter there. Josh, let's go back to the bracket, Dayton. Josh will move on to go against his his hometown friend, Dayton. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Dude, this, I swear, yeah. this just. If this just, you know, goes to ad hominem, I won't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and I will go up against my hometown friend, Perk, as well. Uh, That'll be good. So, yeah. Just to, to recap after today, next week, we have Molly versus Emily. Dayton right. versus Josh in the winner's bracket. And in the cons consolation bracket, we have Joseph versus Gabe. And myself versus Perkins. And the topic for next week is track and field turmoil what is the best track and field event uh we will we'll find out uh in next week's bullshit break around uh thank you to everyone for watching we hope you had a good time and uh if you're listening to the podcast recording we are live streaming these on sundays at 2 p.m eastern so if you want to watch the next two rounds live uh twitch.tv slash ewf underscore podcast 2 p.m eastern uh, but otherwise, it'll be up on the next day, Monday. Um, but yeah, until next time, thank you everyone for watching. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye.